the main question of our project today is, well, how do we yeah. observe the world? Yes, how do we observe the world? I have been fortunate enough to be involved in the partnership program with the Natural History Museum since its conception six years ago. And what we do is we combine um, the education, the science, and the art together and we create an experiential learning opportunity for children. Well, at the beginning of it, they asked us a, a question, how do I observe the world? And that's basically what we're doing throughout this program. Well, we're learning about the world around us and, like, nature. What we do is the artists, the scientists, and the education um, components all come together and we create a question. So our question this year is behind me, it's um, how do I observe the world? So we come up with that essential question that can't be answered by the children or anyone really in just, like, a few sentences. The, the biggest thing for me with any time I work with a, a group of children is to get them to learn to observe. Um, observation is the foundation of everything that science is about. I don't think enough kids actually understand science in a way that they, they need to understand, which is it's the actual formulation of the question and the observation is the, the key to that. It's the, it's the starting point for that. Um, just learning facts after the fact doesn't really matter. Observation is the first step towards developing any kind of set of information really, not just limited to art, but artistically it, it does all start with our senses and then we mix that up with our imagination and what's in our mind and all these cultural stimulus that are happening all the time to develop, um, to develop a project and a practice. Well, first we um, we did it um, as a scientist, and we did and we brought our our notebooks, and we looked at we looked at plants and bugs and animals. Well, we're looking and digging inside in the soil, find different creatures, and also we're also um, observing. This particular program is a great opportunity for me to also get involved with young kids who don't often take the time to look at all this little life around them. Um, and it's not the fact that we're trying to turn them into bug lovers, but just the fact that we're trying to get them to look at things that they may have not seen before and get them to look at things in a different way. 64, 65, 68. Let's estimate 67. Now let me take this off. Estimate 67. We've been doing some activities on um, how to observe plants, for example, and um, today, for instance, we went out in the garden and uh, basically did a study of, of one uh, marked out area. Then, you're going to notice everything you see inside of this piece of screen. screen. All of the plants. Dig around. Maybe you'll find some animals. We're observing these plants. To, and then we have to make some drawings of them and then draw a leaf of them. Okay. Oh, look, let's, look. let's dig in. Oh, let's write that down. And we tried to be as scientific as possible by taking measurements and uh, trying to be as detailed as we could in the description. Big one. So we one. What do you want? Oh, that's a piggy. Now we're looking at it with the with the with the um, magnified glass. It's going down. Do all spiders make webs? No, they don't. My favorite thing about the Natural History Museum is going to the pop, the spider pavilion and seeing like new different types of of spiders. Like first we went into like staff only place to look at real animals instead of the fake animals. And then we get caught to look at spiders too. Most of us, 
most of the people were scared, but then he, he taught us that we don't have to be scared because they're, they're more scared than us than we are than them. This is a egg sack for the spiders. And we've seen orb weaver spiders. And we even seen we even we even seen a giant orb weaver having dinner with a butterfly. I use live insects and their close relatives to help people deal with a lot of the misconceptions that uh, uh, people have about them and uh, also getting people intrigued with the fact that uh, they are the most diverse group of animals on the face of the planet. They took out um, a tarantula and people touched it and um, people also touched a walking stick. Grab a net now. What we are doing today we're doing what's called spot collecting. You spot it, and you try to collect it. It's that easy. You got one? Yeah, I got one. He got one. What is I got it? one, a bee. Right there. Ooh, you got a bee. Got a bee. Oh, all right, stick your hand in there. Flying, flying dogs under there. It was very fun because we were with Brent and he gave us a net. So for a while we were just running around and it was very exciting because a lot of people they were trying to catch a dragonfly. So um, this boy told me and said when you hear somebody scream there's a dragonfly. So when there was somebody screaming he went running and there was a dragonfly. So everybody was trying to catch the dragonfly until um, somebody caught a dragonfly and it was awesome. So today we're doing a walk around the neighborhood of uh, Sienega Elementary School and the class is practicing the observation skills, um, just seeing what they observed, uh, bugs, they just observed some bananas, uh, we found a fungus and uh, just yeah. trying to think about things that they observe. And you've never seen a banana. you look at that, well these are not ready to eat and these actually don't look like the whole meal deal. These look like almost like plantain bananas. Banana. And where do you usually find seeds? Ground. Yeah, but in fruit, right? Think of, think of all the fruits you find seeds in. Oh yeah, we in the Yes. What's what? Oh, an egg sack. Oh, egg sack, egg sack. Oh, 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 oh. The white guy in the corner. Well, looky, looky, looky. Mm -hmm. They're right there. Like, oh, they're so black. Mm -hmm. I know. Let it go. They're all white because it's just about to fall down. It's yeah, just it's about to seeds. fall down? So it's like a plant. The You're on the right path. Do you know? Now, is the fungus just growing on the outside of this tree? No, it's not. It's actually growing into the tree too. The part you're the part you're seeing is only the external part that releases all of the spores to create new fungus. Look, I found a, I found a A good example is some bracket fungus that was growing out of a tree, a pretty monumental fungus, uh, a very large thing. And a number of the kids were actually quite surprised that it was there. And I even asked, how many of you have walked by this every day? And a number of hands went up. Um, they just never noticed it was there. I, I've learned that observation is very important because a lot of times people don't take the time to look at stuff like that are that like small creatures that are actually very important to us.